Hey, Container fans. On this channel today, I had one of my weekly YouTube Live Ask Me Anythings where we talk DevOps, containers, everything from Docker to Kubernetes to Compose to how to run containers in the cloud and your data center, all that stuff. So check out more on this channel. But for this video, I wanna talk really quickly about the 1809 release of Docker Engine, which just came out here in November, 2018. Today on my live AMA, I kind of came up with a quick demo and just showed you two new great features. One of them is known as BuildKit, which changes out the builder or the image builder inside of the Docker engine for a more advanced and faster engine. And it's really easy to use. And then this new feature in Docker client and server that allows you to use the client on your local machine to talk to any server that you have access to over SSH automatically built into both the client and engine. Super easy to use, great for operators if you're in the DevOps or ops space. So check out this quick demo. And for more of these, make sure you subscribe and click that little bell to know when I go live. We learned eight days ago that Docker released 1809, which is the first major release for this new release cycle, which means that every six months they're releasing a new Docker version for the community. And now, most importantly, those versions are gonna be synced up between the Docker Enterprise paid solutions, especially Windows Server people, and the community additions, the free stuff for the rest of us. So those versions are now all gonna be synced. Uh, Docker's released that 18.09 on all the platforms. And in fact, if you're on Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, you should have seen an update this week. I think I got my Docker for Mac update yesterday or the day before. So hopefully if you're on Windows, you're getting that too. Uh, There's going to be lots of fixes in this release, several big new features that I'm excited about, and more. So you can actually check out the release notes if you really want to know the details over on the Docker GitHub repo. And it's it's not Moby slash Moby. That's where a lot of the source code goes for Docker. But the releases for the Docker Community Edition are on github.com slash docker slash dockerce slash releases. And I will put that in the chat so that you can... Check that out later. Um, The changelog there is always, it's great. They always do a great job of showing major PRs and anything that was fixed along the way, it changes. And you can scroll down here and basically read, uh, this is what I do every release. I just take five minutes. I I read through each line. And if it sounds like something I care about, then I'll just click the link and sort of save it for later reading. Um, You know, a lot of these may not affect you. And so if you don't, doesn't sound interesting to you, it's probably not something that will affect you in your day-to-day Docker life. So there's some cool stuff there. The biggest new features are, in my mind, are the release of a new builder. So for building images, something called BuildKit. We've talked about that for several weeks now, if you've been around. And there's a great uh, BuildKit information all about it. So just I would just uh, build kit. Docker 1809. So I'm just going to Google this. And there's some information actually on the Docker blog. There's information from seven days ago. The cool thing is it's really easy to enable. And you just enable that with an environment variable. So if you've ever set an environment variable on your machine in the command line, you're just going to enable build kit through an environment variable. And once you've done that, you don't need to have experimental on anymore. It's just, it's a full, full-fledged full feature in all releases. That will probably speed up your build significantly. You know, I can probably figure something out for you. Um, if I just jump into a repo, let's see, duh, let's see. Let's go into my course. And let's jump into Docker file. So we've got this Docker file here. So I'm gonna do a quick Docker build and test one. Uh, let's see, I wanna do a separate file and then I'm gonna build this directory. So this would be a normal build, right? We've all probably done this if you're new to Docker. If you're brand new to Docker, after this video, check out my course, <laughs> dockermastery.com. Um, but if this is a normal build, right? So uh, you would have this happening. Um, and we can just kill this because we don't really need to do all that. But if I do an export and do a Docker build kit one and do that same thing again, 
you'll notice the output looks different. And we get this really interesting real-time seconds counting sort of interface. And this is a part of the new builder, essentially a brand new, totally fresh library for building images. It now does a lot of this stuff asynchronously and not necessarily in a top-down approach. So we get a whole bunch of speed improvements because it's able to be smart and build different parts at different times and do simultaneous layers of the image even, which we never had that feature before. That was kind of crazy. So it can do sort of parallel tasking in your builds. There's a lot more coming with this toolkit. It's gonna to allow a lot of new in, uh, features. Um, I think we're now able to finally mount SSH secrets and other secrets in and do uh, bind mounts in building. I haven't actually tested that out yet, but there's lots of new stuff coming. Stay tuned to this channel and my newsletter and other stuff for new stuff happening with that. So the other big feature is SSH. And I talked about that a few weeks ago. And there's a great, if you just, um, talk, actually this, uh, Tonus came out with this uh, just eight days ago. I haven't actually read this one. So these are the two big features that I'm talking about. And this is one of the core engineers on Docker. So he's really excited about this, obviously. And this is the build kit feature I just talked about. But he also describes the feature for you to basically use SSH so that you never have to leave your local command line. You can now jump into any remote Docker server on Mac and Windows, doesn't matter, as long as they're running the SSH daemon and you have SSH access, you don't need to SSH into the server. You just enable uh, another feature by just doing an export and then do a Docker host. And you're going to set this environment variable to SSH and then however you're gonna to get to it. So in my case, I might do root at London. This is a server of mine. And now when I do that, and then I do a Docker version, it's gonna go over the internet using SSH. And you'll see this is actually the version of my Linux server on the internet. If I unset um, Docker host, and then do that again, um, let's see if we get a different version. It might be the same exact version because we're on the same build. Oh, well, you can see the build date is different. <laughs> so the build there is, is the seventh at uh, zero, and this is a build seventh at 1600. So you can tell, um, or not 1600, uh, 16 minutes. So you can tell that the builds are different. So at least it proves a little bit that you were really on a different host. And that's all you have to do. Like that's, that's all you have to do to jump into a remote server. And that way I never have to copy my Docker files or my Compose files or anything to the server. I just have everything local and I can operate against that remote system. Before, if you've ever done this, you have to set up TLS certificates. You have to open the TCP port on the Docker service, the daemon that runs on that machine. It's a bunch of work. It's a pain in the butt. So check that stuff out. It's all in 1809. I'll keep talking about that stuff because I'm very excited. Thanks so much for watching that quick video. Subscribe to this channel to see more Docker and container stuff. Every week I do a live Ask Me Anything on this channel so you can get notified of those by clicking the subscribe and then the little dinner bell next to it. And you can find out more about my courses and other free resources at brettfisher.com docker. That's also in the description with links and info there. And have a great day.